In this problem, uh, we're going to look at a nice AP free response question. Um, it is one involving a chart of values, so we're not given actual function, but just some values on that function. And I actually like this type of problem. I don't know, I think it's kind of fun looking through the chart, find your values. Uh, so let's get into it. The functions f and g are differentiable for all real numbers, and g is strictly increasing. The table below gives the values of the functions and their derivatives at selected values of x. The function h is given by h of x equals f of g of x minus 6. In part a, so the first thing, we are asked to explain why there must be a value r for r greater than 1 and less than 3, such that h of r is equal to negative 5. Okay, so h of r, so we're not going to be able to strictly use these values in the table. Uh, instead, we're going to have to look at our h of x function, which is the composition function. Okay, so we are asked to show that this value has to exist, that h has to have a y value of negative 5 somewhere, somewhere between 1 and 3. When you are asked to find a value in an interval of the original function, intermediate value theorem should pop to your head. So once again, if you are asked to find some value, like we are asked to find negative 5, on an interval, intermediate value theorem should pop in your head, and that's what you want to use. Intermediate value theorem is where if you have some function, and it is continuous, the intermediate value theorem says the function passes through every value, every y value from your two endpoints. It doesn't skip over anything. However, that is only the case if the function is continuous. So on an AP test, you have to be able to satisfy the conditions of that theorem. So if I'm going to use the intermediate value theorem, I have to satisfy the condition that the function is indeed continuous. So is h continuous? Well, nowhere up here in our block of text does it say that any of the functions are continuous. Now, it talks about f and g, which h is composition of that. So we can look at f and g, but it doesn't say they're continuous. However, it says that f and g are differentiable, and that's even more powerful than continuous. Because we have to remember, differentiability implies continuity. You have to remember that on the AP test. That idea will come up often. So we say, since f and g are differentiable, f and g are continuous. We have to establish that f and g are continuous. Um, as they are grading your AP test, they are definitely going to be looking for the fact that you establish f and g are continuous. And then we can say, since f and g, because we haven't established that h is continuous, and that's what we're going to be doing the intermediate value theorem on. So now we have to establish that h is continuous. So I say, since f and g are continuous, h of x is continuous. Um, and that's good there. Uh, and then that's because if a composition function is made up of two uh, continuous functions, it also is continuous. OK, so we have established it's continuous. Therefore, we apply the intermediate value theorem. And how do we apply that? Well, let's find the y value of our first point. So at 1, what is the y value? At 3, what is the y value? And it should be such that the y value, one of them is less than negative 5, and one of them is greater than negative 5. And then we can say that negative 5 falls in between there. So we have to find h of 1, which is equal to um, looking up here, f of g of 1 minus 6. And then we can consult our table. 
g of 1, so I'm going to 1, g of 1 is 2. So we're finding f of 2 minus 6. This is the part I like about these. It's fun to just kind of look at the table and find your values. f of 2 is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3. Now we go over to our other endpoint, h of 3. And that would be f of g of 3. Consult the table. g of 3 is 4. So we are now finding f of 4 minus 6. And f of 4 is negative 1. Oops. And so we get negative 1 minus 6 is equal to negative 7. OK, so this is good. Um, because we have these two values of 3 and negative 7, and we're trying to show that negative 5 is somewhere in between our x values of 1 and 3, that's good because negative 5 falls in between 3 and negative 7. So we can say since we have that 3, well, negative, oops, sorry, I should write this the other way. Since negative 7 is less than negative 5, and negative 5 is less than 3, so it falls in between, and h of x is continuous, by the intermediate value theorem, IVT, there exists, so here we just kind of say what does the intermediate value theorem tells us. h of r on the interval 1 to 3 such that h of r equals negative 5. When they're grading this, they're looking for this idea. You established it's continuous. You established that you used intermediate value theorem. You established that you check the endpoints. You do those things, that's what they're looking for, not uh, to give you full marks on that. Okay, now let's look at part B. Part B, explain why there must be a value C for C greater than 1, less than 3, such that H prime of C is negative 5. That looks eerily the same as part A. So you might just go and go right through and do intermediate value theorem. However, that's not going to establish exactly what you want based on the chart of values we have. The difference in this one is we are now dealing with the derivative. It's h prime of c. When you are trying to find, or you're trying to show that there is a value on an interval with a derivative, you use the mean value theorem. So let's see, original function Use the intermediate value theorem. Derivative, use the mean value theorem. What is the mean value theorem? Let's remember. That's saying, suppose I have a function that is continuous and differentiable. It's continuous and differentiable. The slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of a tangent line somewhere on it. Now let me reword that. There is somewhere in between your endpoints such that the derivative is equal to the slope of the secant line. That's the mean value theorem there. So that, looking at our part B, that means somewhere h prime of c should be equal to h of 3 minus h of 1 over 3 minus 1, which that is h of 3 we already we already found h of 3, that is negative 7, and then we found h of 1, which is 3. Right here is where we found it. 
divided by 3 minus 1, that gives me negative 10 over 2, which is negative 5. So it's nice, the points they gave us and what they're trying to show us, uh, it kind of works nicely because we see that using the mean value theorem on our endpoints 1, 3, we get negative 5. So um, that tells us that somewhere, no matter what our function looks like, because of the slope of the secant line is negative 5, there exists some c value in that interval such that the slope of the tangent line is also negative 5. However, just like in part A, we have to establish the ground rules, the conditions, before we can just say by the mean value theorem. So I have to say, since h is differentiable and continuous, now of course differentiability um, implies continuity, but we want to establish both these ground rules. By the mean value theorem, h prime of c equals negative 5 on the open interval 1, 2, 3. When they're grading this, they're looking. Did you say, did you establish the conditions? that h is differentiable and continuous. Did you use the mean value theorem? And then you have to show this work here, showing that the mean value theorem is telling us the slope has to be negative five at one point. Okay, so that's a nice AP uh, question. And it's good to keep in mind that you have to establish conditions when you use the theorem, especially on the free response to get full marks. All right, thank you.